is the lead from uranium-235, they actually give ages between one and two billion years. This is well known in the, in the geologic literature. It's not something that a creationist dreamed up. You act, that diagram actually comes from one of the two textbooks that's used in every university around the world to teach geochronology, the dating of rocks, to geology students. So this comes straight out of their own... They recognise, and they call this the lead isotope paradox, that all these islands with recent lava flows that has, can be historically eyeballed give ages of one to two billion years. So we can see that this assumption, all the daughter derived from the parent, is violated by inheritance from the mantle. We've got examples where we know the true ages of the rock and in fact we get wrong ages as a result of these dating methods. What about assumption number two? No other process has affected the parent-daughter relationship other than radioactive decay. Well, if we go to New Zealand, it's got uh, very uh, volcanically active areas in the North Island, the Central North Island, the Taupo volcanic zone. Mount Ruapeo is an active volcano and Mount Narahoe, just to the north of it, was uh, up until recently uh, New Zealand's most active volcano. And there's Mount Narahoe in the foreground and Mount Ruapeo in the distance. By the way, hands up those who saw the movie The Lord of the Rings. Okay, that was Mount Doom in The Lord of the Rings. And uh, there it is up close. The last eruption was in 1975. It's actually been dormant. But prior to that, it erupted every 10 to 15 years in a regular, on a regular basis. And you can see from the, the, the slopes, uh, some areas are grassed and some are not. You can see different colours on the slopes of the volcano. And, the, and the, the volcanologists and geologists know the exact dates of many of these lava flows. The exact dates. In fact, here's a map of some of the more recent lava flows. There was quite a few in 1954 and 55. You actually knew the day, the month and the day in which the eruption occurred. And so it was very easy to go in there and actually choose samples from specific lava flows, the date of, which of the eruption we knew exactly. So I collected samples from the 1949 flow there, number one on that list. Uh, from the, um, the 1975 avalanche deposits, from the June 30, 1954 flow, um, one of the July flows, but there were five different lava flows I collected samples from. And we knew the exact dates of those flows. And yet they gave potassium argon model ages up to three and a half million years from, for rocks that were less than, uh, at the time, were only 50 years old or less. Now the answer is, of course, that they gave those ages like the ones from Mount St Helens because there was extra argon, excess argon, inherited from the mantle source of these lava flows. Interestingly, the rubidium strontium isochron age was 133 million years for these samples, although there was a big error margin. Interestingly, the geologists also used the daughter atoms, compare the different daughter atoms to test whether there has been contamination. And these lavas at Mount Narahoe are not basalt, they're of a lava called andesite, named after the Andes Mountains. Okay? And they figured out why they were not basalt lavas when uh, when in, that, in other parts of, uh, of the Pacific you get basalt lavas, why were these andesite lavas? Well, it was because, and, and this is a very technical diagram, comparing the different daughter isotopes. The bottom diagram is lead versus neodymium. The top diagram is lead versus strontium. And uh, this has all been published in, the te in technical papers for those of you who want to follow up the details. But... This plot shows how you can demonstrate there was between 5 and 10% contamination of an original basalt 
lava to produce these andesites. The composition of a, an original basalt had been contaminated. So if, contamina if, the, if the lava had been contaminated, therefore you can't trust the radioactive dates. You've assumed no contamination, but now we can demonstrate contamination. And uh, the contamination was due to the fact that the Pacific Ocean floor is actually being pushed down under New Zealand. The basalt is being produced at the base of the mantle. Uh, uh, the red area is the mantle. But some of the material that's being taken down into the, um, into underneath New Zealand includes some of the ocean floor sediments. They're actually being pulled down into the Earth's mantle with the ocean floor. And it's that which has contaminated the basalt to make the andesite lavas. Here's another example of, of contamination. This was also published in the first volume of the Rate Research. This comes straight out of the secular literature. They took a grain of a, of a mineral and they actually, with a, with a very small uh, beam of um, ions, uh, um, a little, uh, sorry, an electron beam to, to test spots, very tiny spots on this, this crystal. At the edge of the crystal, you can see there the edge sample of spot number two gave a, an argon-argon age, which is a variation of the potassium-argon dating method, of almost uh, around 500 million years. And the further you went into the grain, the younger the grain became. And so you got in here, once you got in about a hundred million, a hundred millionths of a metre, a micron, 100 microns, the age had dropped to about 150 million years. Why was that? Well, it was because the outer edge of the mineral had absorbed argon, which was moving through the rock, and it had been per it had diffused and permeated into the crystal to make it look older. So argon is a gas that moves around, and so it can...